Hey everyone, you are watching Jet Plays, and today I am playing Hardcore Uprising from Konami, made by Arc System Works, uh, the people who brought you Blaze Blue and Guilty Gear. So, this is a very anime take on Contra, of course, because that's what Arc System Works does. And, I mean, this one came out a few years ago, and it kind of just came and went really fast. Um, even though I'm a hardcore Contra fan, I kind of let this one slip by for whatever reason. And I ultimately picked it up for $3 at a Xbox Live Arcade sale. And I'm actually kind of sad that I did not pick this up sooner because, man, this game is pretty awesome. So I'm, play I'm playing this on Rising Mode. You can play this in two main modes, uh, Arcade Mode and Rising Mode. Arcade Mode, of course, super hard challenge. You only get three lives to beat this game. Three lives, three health bars, or three chunks of health. Hold on, let me turn the volume down on my headphones so I can speak a little better, having a little difficulty concentrating and talking at the same time. So where was I? Oh, yes, in Rising Mode, the big difference is you can choose what level you play on. After you've beaten it, you can just go back. Your guys can level up, so as you can see, I've got a really big health bar and a lot of lives to work with, so I think we should be able to get through this level just fine. Oh, man. Should be, should be able to get through this level just fine. Uh-oh, what's going on? Uh... Oh. I'm struggling to remember all the controls of this game because it has... Oh, there we go. There, there's my dash. So one of the big differences in this particular game, you get an air dash, you get a double jump. A lot of fighting game maneuvers make it into this thing. I think you can parry as well as one of your upgrades in rising mode. Oof, I got hit pretty good there. Um... Yeah, some of the other games I've been looking to record are the original Contra and Contra 3 on the SNES because those two are some of my favorite games of all time. As for this one, like, yeah, I really like the inclusion of Rising Mode. I think that if you're trying to beat this in Arcade Mode, it's practically impossible. I don't know how anyone would do this because this game is insanely hard on its own. But uh, with Rising Mode, the challenge is a little more manageable. Being able to level up your guy and get way more health I think one of the final power-ups you can unlock is the 30 lives, kind of like Contra. It kind of stinks there's no, at least as far as I know, no Konami code, but at least the 30 lives are in there one way or another. Oh, man. <laughs> I just got bopped real good. Oh. Oh, no. Smooth play. But yeah, why'd I choose to broadcast this game, well, I guess record this game on this particular day? Um, I've got a really busy day lined up, and I didn't want to jump into anything too heavy to record. And this is a game I've wanted to record for a while now. I really like playing this one, and I don't think it got the love that it deserved. Um, with that said, I have not beaten this game. I played all the way to the last boss, and I've almost beaten the last boss, but I... I eventually died, well I died a lot of times, and at a certain point I was like three hits away from killing him, and I just said, you know what, I am done for today, and have not picked this game up since, and that was a few months ago. Um, I love that even though this looks a lot different, at least anime stylings and whatnot, it still plays like a legit Contra game with enough new layers of nuance to make things interesting. Oh, I can't remember where to go. Ah, oh, it's supposed to go down. It's supposed to be this. Yes. There we go, just to be on the safe side. Oh man, I wish I, I really wish I had a turbo button on my controller right now. Oh no, I gotta go the other way. So how is gaming for you guys? We are in the dead of February and nothing's really come out. Um, if you've got an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4, 
maybe you're enjoying Tomb Raider, the Definitive Edition. Uh, having played Tomb Raider last year, it was one of my favorites. I would suspect that that game is really good on the... Oh, I keep doing that! Uh, oh, oof. On your PlayStation 4 or Xbox One, it's probably excellent. Oh, nope. Back up here. Uh, of course... Oh, I, I almost got him. I almost got him. I almost got him. Uh... So yeah, things in the gaming space have been really quiet as far as stuff to play, and I've actually just gotten really interested in board games. Um, there was a big trip where Steph and I went to this amazing board game store in Toronto called 401 Games, and we just bought a whole bunch of games, so I bought... Between the four of us, we got Yomi, we got uh, Saboteur, oh yeah, there's a running dash on here too. Uh, Yomi, Saboteur, Pixel Tactics, which I have not played yet, and there's one other game. I can't even remember. I got Formula D recently, which is an excellent racing game. It's really weird. It's a racing game that simulates a board game that simulates racing games, but it's so good. Oh. I apologize for my mediocre performance in this one. I swear this game is really hard. <laughs> Alright, I got a medal, whatever that does. Just run! Oh, no, okay. Doesn't work on that guy, apparently. Ah! Oof. Oh. Did I just have to wait? I don't even know. Or is it waiting for me to move? Okay, no. Alright, great. Uh, okay, oh. Alright, at least I can do this. No. Uh. Oof, okay. Um, there's probably a secret up there or something. I'm just gonna let it go. <laughs> of course, wasn't paying attention that split second. And I died. Um, oof. No, okay. Ha! Sucker. So yeah, I've been just really interested in the board game scene, playing board games, reading about, reading about them, writing them, buying them, playing them when I can. And so my actual interest in oh man, my actual interest in video games has waned quite a bit. So I haven't really been playing all that much. I played a little bit of Arkham Origins. Uh, I played that until I realized that I really didn't like it, and I traded it in the very next day. Um, what else have I been playing? So yeah, I traded that in. I I got Assassin's Creed 4. What am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, pure amateur hour here. I played a little bit of Assassin's Creed 4, maybe an hour or two at most. And so far it's good. I, I, re I was really disappointed in Assassin's Creed 3. And this one, it looks gorgeous. I, I really like the main character. Uh, I think Edward Kenway. And it's interesting to see, there were certain things that were left a mystery. Oh man, just jumping off a waterfall. I hope my surfboard is still at the bottom when I get there. Yep, there it is, right on cue. Uh oh. Right on cue, so here we go, we have some big robot thing. Side note, the music in this game is awesome. It is a hardcore J-Rock, <laughs> and it's really good, and they, play, they do some really nice homages to some of the original Contra music at times, but the new stuff is also excellent. I don't even remember what I was talking about. It was something about not being interested. Oh! Assassin's Creed 4. It's good. There's a... I really like the new main character, and there was some stuff that they left a mystery about the assassins versus the 
the Templars that the game, the third game did not explain. Not the third game, Assassin's Creed 3 did not explain that they explain here very early on. So I'm glad that they resolved that for me because that was one of the few things I was really interested in about that game. All right, so we got we got this boss. I'm shooting its giant glowing eye from massive damage. Oh no. Um, I don't call most people remember Contra as a super old franchise, and people are like, ah, oh, we need more like Contra 1 and Contra 3. But I feel like Konami's actually put out quite a few Contra games in the last few years. I know, besides the virtual console releases, there's been. Contra 4 on the DS, which is very good, although extremely hard. But I guess what would you, what else would you expect from a Contra game? Oh man, this is not looking good for me. I don't know if I'm gonna even make it through this level. I am rusty, guys. I know I use that as an excuse in every single video, but I really mean it this time. Okay. Oh, oh there's just too much stuff. What's, what's left? Yeah, there was Contra 4 on the DS. There was... There's at least one Wii exclusive Contra game that I meant to play and that I never did. And what else was there? There was Contra. Oh, Contra. The original Contra got a port to iOS. Uh, don't play that game. Just please, don't, don't buy it. It's not worth it. It was really bad. Uh, the... The controls are really wonky, and the worst part is it's in-app purchases, at least at the time. I, when I was playing it, the game, I bought the Japanese version, which was not supposed to come out in North America, and the in-app purchases for that game were heinous. They gave you, I think it was, you started with three lives, and you had like four continues, and if you burned all four continues, you had to pay four more continues. So of course the controls are really bad and it's Contra, so I only got to like the second or third level before I ran out of all the free credits and then at that point they said, hey, do you want to spend a dollar to get more continues? And I said, hell no. <laughs> Rightfully so. Um, In-app purchases, I know that in-app purchases and DLC and all that, it's the future of games. We, Unless we really rally against it and show our support by not buying any of the really bad ones, then of course it's just going to keep happening, but... Side note, I've, I've done this pattern cycle three times, and it has not shown any... So oh, there it is! Alright, come on, helicopter, get me out of here! There it is! Alright, and we out. Sweet. So yes, in-app purchases. Sometimes they make a game better, sometimes they don't. And it's really about how you approach it. Um, and I feel like Contra on iOS, when I played it at the time, definitely was not one of those games. Alright, so I'm going to wrap things up here. This was Hardcore Uprising. You can get this on Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network. I don't know. It usually retails for 15 bucks, but it might be cheap at some point, or might come down at some point in the future. Uh, regardless of its price, I think this game is pretty awesome, and especially if you are a Contra fan from yesteryear, this is one that you should play for sure. So if there's any reason you passed on this, I don't know, maybe because it looked too anime or too different from what you're used to with Contra, just let that go. Try it out. Also, play Rising Mode, because Arcade Mode will break you as a human being. <laughs> Alright, so, um, till next time, I'm Jet from InThirdPerson.com and SplitKick.com. You can check out more of these videos on YouTube.com slash Jet, J-E-T-T, InThirdPerson, all in one word. And until next time, I'll see you later.